All right, now that we have got our towers in place, let's go ahead and focus on the tower braces that connect our towers together. Yeah, they uh, are going to run in between the towers vertically. That's right. So give us a quick overview of how Peter approached this. Okay, so um, a very brief overview is we're going to use another uh, box as our base geometry. Mm -hmm. We're going to scale the box out in X based on like the distance between these towers we'll scale it in y based on like a an overall parameter and also based on um because we're going to be copy having multiple copies of this we're going to use like the copy number we're going to use something called stamping mm -hmm. and we're going to basically have it so that each additional copy that comes down is uh, wider is scaled out more in y than the previous and um we're also going to uh, scale them in Z so that they are the same as the thickness of the towers. Um, we're simply then going to copy them down in vertically, uh, copy them in length, and then copy them in width. Okay, sounds good. So it all sounds easy. The only slightly technical, slightly complicated bit is working out the distance between these two towers. And in the grand scheme of things, it's really not that bad. So okay. um, hopefully everything will make sense as we, we get there. But to uh, begin, let's drop down a new box node. And I will rename this to Box Brace Base Geo. And um, just as we did when we set up the towers, I'm going to uncheck Consolidate Corner Points. So uh, let's uh, set up some parameters on our master control that we'll use to set up our braces. And um, I'll put these uh, below the tower but above our tier settings. So let's drop in a new float which I will call brace thickness. And this is going to be um, basically an overall control for the scaling in Y. Okay. And I'll give that a range of 0 to 1. Um, best lock that to 0 0.001. Yeah, follow with everything that. we've done before, but yep. leave <clears throat> 1 as unlocked. Let's drop in another. I missed the label there. Give me a second. So brace thickness. Okay, let's drop in another float, which is going to be a, an offset for the whole brace um, system in Y. So I'm going to call this brace position Y. And some of these uh, guys we're not going to encounter until later. I'm just going to create everything we need right up front. Um, since things get a little bit more technical later, I don't want to have to jump back to this guy and uh, be putting new parameters on. I'd rather be able to just go there straight away and grab what I need so that we can keep the uh, train of thought flowing. Okay. So, um, brace position Y, uh, set up the label, and um, set the range on this guy from minus 2 to 2. And uh, the final float that we're going to set up is going to be brace spacing. Um, it's going to be the spacing in Y between our, mm -hmm. our braces, like an overall control on that. So, brace spacing. And I'll set the range on that from minus 1. To one. So uh, we are going to have an integer value controlling the number of braces that we are uh, going to have duplicated down. I'm using a copy sop to duplicate those. So let's drop a new integer parameter down called num braces, uh, number of braces, and we'll lock that with a minimum of zero in case we don't want any braces, and leave that open. You might to want to ten. move it above to brace thickness and all that makes sense. Yeah. So. Well, up at the top yeah. of the, the settings for braces. Yeah, so That's you first a, you said how many you're going to have. And then, then there's thickness the and position mm -hmm. and Y and their spacing. Um, I'll probably put their spacing above position Y as well. Thickness and spacing, keep those together. Okay. So um, with that, we can accept out there and start uh, manipulating our box geometry. So um, let's wire a transform of our box. Not a transform axis. There we go. And uh, first we can... Um, scale in Y based on our brace thickness we set up. Now I'm going to uh, multiply this by 0.1 um, which is the exact same as dividing by 10 and the reason for that is that I want this uh, slider to have a fairly large range going from 0 to 1. I don't want it to be going like from 0 to 0 0.1 you'd be dealing with very small numbers here so I'd rather use a scale factor over on here that sort of um, shrinks that effect down than have a slider that uses very small values that's just my personal preference. So let's paste that guy in as a relative reference and multiply by 0.1. So we've got a brace thickness controlling this guy. It looks really small, but we've got to remember how big this is in comparison to the bridge. 
So if we jump back over to the transform, and we can set our scale Z to, um, if you remember when we set up our tower, we had our uniform scale, which was the X and Z scale of our tower poles. We can uh, use that for our scale in um, Z, which is going to be uh, the dimension that lines up with our towers. So this guy is actually going to be the same uh, thickness in Z as our towers. Okay. So to calculate um, the width in X, what we're going to do, we're going to take the uh, width curve and basically work out the distance between two points on that curve because that distance is going to be the distance between the center points of two towers. With that distance in mind and knowing how thick our towers are in X, we can uh, work out how thick this brace needs to be in X. Also, knowing the distance between these uh, two towers, we can offset the points that we're going to copy to um, so that they sit uh, central to the two towers as opposed to being copied so that they're um, laying with the tower going through the center. We can copy it so that the tower is at, at one edge. So um, this is actually going to have a dual purpose and help us out later. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the width curve right up here at the top after we uh, switch but before we resample. And I'm going to uh, basically wire this into a null. Now, the reason I'm using a null is just because we're going to take a lot of wires off of this guy um, in the next few nodes that we set up. It's nice to have the null down where we're working. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can... Uh, so if I middle mouse and drop a null. Um, so we can have this down here. We can wire off of the null. And effectively, we're just wiring back off of that node, we've, the switch right. node we've just wired off of. But it means that instead of having to keep going and finding it, we can wire it from here. So I am going to call this... Um, to width switch just so we you know where that's come from so we know what we're wiring off of so this guy coming down here is our uh, we turn on point numbers it's our width curve and um i'm going to actually wire this guy into two delete nodes first and then um basically delete out everything but point zero okay. and everything but point one on the other node so that we have um a wire that will give us point zero and a wire that will give us point one I'm going to then wire the, both of those into a point stop. So uh, firstly, let's um, wire this into a delete node. And uh, once we've got the point stop in place, uh, I'll explain what we're doing and hopefully everything will become clear. So if everyone just uh, bears with me for the second. So let's um, delete non-selected, change that down to points, and set the pattern to zero. So let's go delete everything but point zero there. If I copy this and paste with Control v Control c we can change our pattern to one there to get... Uh, the point up here. So you notice that over here, this is point zero. Since we only have one point coming out of here, this guy is point zero. So we've got the two points, but they have the same point number. So let's drop down a point stop. We can wire this guy into our first input and this guy into our second input. And what we can do down the point stop, we've basically got a single point that's going to be output from this. We can set the position in X such that its position in X represents the distance between those two points because we've got these two points coming in so we can take one point from the other and um, <laughs> the bypass on that node is really spazzing out <laughs> yeah so um, we can take our TX of the first point our point that's coming in from this input mm -hmm. and from that we can mo uh, take away the TX from the second input and what that's going to leave us is a distance between the two points that were coming in it's going to set the position of the point to uh, to that distance okay. um, so with that we can actually use expressions on other nodes to reference uh, the position of that point and because we're referencing the position of that point what we're actually referencing is the distance between the two points this was the uh, system that Peter used to uh, so at the distance, I quite liked it. It's, a, yeah, it's, very it's nice. an innovative uh, solution. So um, if we come up to our null, and let's branch off with a transform. No, not with a bridge, with a transform. Thank you. And uh, we're actually going to reference our um, position at that point here on this transform. So what we're taking is our complete curve, and I want to offset it based on um, half of the distance between so that we have a point in the center of where we're going to be copying uh, each of our braces to later. Um, this is just uh, so that I can demonstrate referencing that value now since we just set it up, and then um, we're actually going to come back and use this curve for copying in, in a little while. Okay. So um, let's take the transform, and we can set our uh, translate x to... Uh, Use the expression point um, to reference a point node. 
and I am going to actually rename this guy to Point Tower Distance. Since we're about to reference it, it makes sense for him to have a sensible name. So the first uh, argument there is going to be the point stop that we're referencing, which is Point Tower Distance. The second argument is the point number. We only have our one point, point mm -hmm. zero, so that's the next argument. The attribute that we want to reference is our next argument. That's uh, P for position. And finally, the index. Since position is a vector, it has X, Y, and Z. We want to uh, reference the X position, so that's going to be index zero there. We want to take all of that. We want to divide it by two. And you see that offsets it so that um, our points are now going to be halfway between... Uh, where their towers are sitting, the points are offset there. So we now um, can wire this basically into a group that uh, groups everything but point zero. Okay. Since if we were to copy to zero, that would actually be floating out in right. space. So um, let's wire this into a new group node, and this will be used later for um, copying the braces around. So we can just call our group two group non-zero. And uh, I will set the node name to the same, follow that convention. We're dealing with points. And I will group by pattern, and the pattern is non-zero. So that's just grabbing those two guys there. Okay. So um, we now can also use uh, our translate x value. We could either directly reference this expression. I'm actually going to reference the translate x value here. And um, referencing that to set the scale of our box in x. So... Um, we're actually getting back to what we were originally doing, which is setting up the dimensions on this guy. Um, if we come to our scale x, now obviously before um, we divided that in two when we translated, so we actually need to multiply that back up by two to get the distance between the two towers. Now um, this was interesting. Um, we can. I'm going to set this to minus. Doesn't make any difference right now but it does seem to make calculations a lot easier in a minute when we offset with the uh, scale of the, um, look for the word, scale of the towers, the width okay. of the towers. Um, technically, minus comes from the fact that the order of the points when we subtracted the points from each other when we were using the point stop, mm -hmm. um, the order of the points there makes things easy. We don't have to use a minus here, but it does mean that we now are, uh, need a minus here to keep things so that we haven't actually flipped things over without a minus things have actually flipped over without us realizing due to the uh position being negative okay so when we scale based on a negative that is gonna flip things over and this just keeps things neater so um as i was saying this actually if we were to well we can't actually see our towers intersecting that right now this would actually take us into the towers intersect with the towers and um since they're the same width in Z, mm -hmm. we'd uh, actually have some overlapping there. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take into account the thickness of the towers to actually scale this down a little bit less than it is. So if we um, remember, uh, we set up a parameter on our master control called tower uniform scale. So if we were to take away that from uh, the current scale we're using, so master control, tower uniform scale, uniform scale, and enter and that will just uh, adjust for the towers so now this will actually sit flush with the towers and we'll see that later when we when we copy that out so if uh, just take my word for it for the second okay. <laughs> so um i'm gonna add another parameter to the master control this is um an interesting parameter it's basically i'm going to be called true height and what it's going to be used is for helping position um these uh braces so that they're positioned and duplicated based on what is the true height of the towers and what do i mean by true height i mean the height basically from the top tier to the top of the towers and that takes into account a couple of things it takes into account our overall height that controls both the cables and the towers uh, it takes into account our tower height uh, parameter if we remember we scale by both of those uh, one after the other so i'm going to take both of those parameters multiply them together and then we have our tower offset um, which can shift the towers up and down. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take the tower offset and add that onto the two. So um, let's add a new floating point parameter. And I'll uh, bring this underneath uh, all our tower parameters. I'm going to call this guy true height. This isn't going to be a parameter that we uh, will control on our asset. It's a parameter that's going to be set with an expression. And when we create our asset, we won't actually copy this guy over. It's just a nice place to have it, um, since we will reference it a couple of times later. So uh, true height. And if we uh, 
open up an expression editor on this guy, I want to use a uh, height channel multiplied by a uh, tower height channel and then add onto that a uh, tower offset channel. So um, if we accept that and currently our true height is 3.4612. So we can use this to offset, to translate this box in Y so that it basically translates up to the very top of the towers. So um, if we come back to this uh, transform, let's grab true height. Yeah, I think I accidentally pasted in there instead of copying, which would be, which would be bad. <laughs> so we can come to translate Y and paste a copied relative reference, and that will boost that up to the top of the towers. Let's see if we can actually see the towers. First the template and the merge. So we can see that that's up now at mm -hmm. the, the top of the towers. Let's untemplate that guy. So um, with that translated up, we can... Uh, also want to take into account a parameter we set up earlier. It was a little while ago. We set up a position Y um, offset. So let's uh, add that in as well so that we can um, offset where the top position of these braces are. So let's uh, come to our translate Y. I'm actually going to Alt-E to bring up an expression of it to there. And add to that um, the master control brace position Y. And accept. So now if we were to change our... Um, brace position in Y, that's going to offset that as well. Nice. So, we can finally uh, get on to copying these guys and getting <laughs> multiple braces. It's a little bit of a lengthy setup. I hope that everyone's managed to follow along so far. Yeah, so All far right. so good. Awesome. So, um, yeah, we'll wire this guy into a copy sop, and we can actually get this guy uh, duplicated vertically. So we're actually dealing with um, just one tower's set of braces right now. So let's uh, grab this guy. I'm going to make some room and wire this into a copy sop. And uh, the number of copies here, uh, we're going to uh, drive based on the number of braces that we wanted. So let's copy that parameter and paste that in here. We're also going to uh, generate our translations. Um, we're going to be transforming cumulative, which basically means that for every additional copy, it gets uh, translated, transformed, by a set of translations again from the copy before it. So we're going to uh, set our translate Y such that if we were to uh, just use numbers right now and actually set a number of braces up to something sensible and bring our visibility down, we can see that each guy is being offset by minus 0.8 from the one before it. So we're going to use a fairly simple expression that takes into account our overall height and uh, divides that by basically the um, total number of uh, points that we're copying to, the total number of copies we're going to have. I'm um, going to minus one from that since the, um, due to the fact that we have three copies but the space between them, we only have like two divisions. Mm -hmm. So I want to divide it into two so that... Um, these would be spaced from top right down to bottom. And uh, we're going to also then bring in some other uh, factors into play. But for now, I've set up uh, the basic expression, which is going to be the master controls true height divided by... So that's the uh, total number of copies. Um, dollar NCY is a local variable on the copy sop referring to the number of copies we're having. Uh, minus one. Again, since if we have three copies, I want to have uh, two divisions to calculate that. So if we click uh, accept, you can see that's being um, spaced out. Currently, we've got uh, brace position Y has been offset slightly. If we set that back to zero, that's um, going all the way from the top of the towers down to the deck surface, the tier surface below. So I'm actually going to start changing this up a little bit. I also want to take into account our brace spacing parameter we set up earlier so that we have the ability to uh, increase and decrease the uh, spacing between the braces. So I'm going to take everything that we've got so far. I'm going to multiply that in by our master control brace spacing, which currently is going to make everything go very tiny. Yeah, I need to change the range on that guy as well, because currently it's a little bit unsensible. 
So uh, that's okay. changing the spacing. Let me just um, tweak the range on this guy. So uh, I'm actually going to probably have that at 0 0.001 um, and block that down. So we can bring those right up or okay. space them out. And uh, finally, there's another factor that I want to take into play. And um, that is the current copy number so that we get a, uh, a, a nice pattern. It's more for aesthetic effect such that we have... Um, less of a gap between the first two and more of a gap next time, more of a gap next time. So instead of them being uh, distributed with an even spacing, they, right. they, they're they distributed um, such that they get further and further apart. So uh, we'll take our entire expression that we've got so far and we'll multiply that by the local variable dollar $cy, which is the current copy number. And if we accept that, we can see we get this uh, effect. So we can drop our brace facing right down. We can start tweaking brace thickness is really thin um, we're actually going to change brace thickness based on the copy number as well but this is where we start coming into copy stamping um, we could scale these guys here but just to show off copy stamping um, what we can do we can take the uh, local variable we've just referenced uh, $CY and we can stamp that onto each copy such that we can reference it back up the network so um, if we check stamp inputs, it's going to stamp each of these copy with whichever variables we start typing in here. And there's um, a couple, actually there's just a single one that I want to use called copy num. I'm going to set that value to $CY. I'm actually going to add one to that so it's one based. And uh, back up here, um, after this transform, but before this transform, just so we have it separate from this scale, I'm going to wire in a new transform. And I'm going to scale in Y um, based on that stamp we just set up. So if we open up an expression editor to reference a stamp, we use the stamp expression. We need to feed in the copy stop that we're using, which currently is copy2. I will rename it. The expression will update when we rename the node. Um, we need to also tell it the variable that we stamped on. That was a copy num. And finally, we need to give it a default value in case the stamping didn't get applied to the object. So we'll give that a default value of zero. So if everything works, this will be scaled by one, this guy will get scaled by two, and this guy will get scaled up by three. So if we accept, that possibly didn't work. Okay, so uh, I've realized what it is. <laughs> yeah, it was um, a very simple mistake, actually. But yeah, it took us a few minutes to... Uh, narrow down where the mistake was. It was just that I simply hadn't set the pivot yet on this guy. So the pivot was set to zero. So as we scale up, we're scaling up away from the origin. And it's basically, we were zoomed in down here. It's like, where did everyone go? Well, they've got scaled away from the origin. So they're moving further and further up. Um, basically, I want the pivot to be set to the centroid of the geometry and Y. That way they're scaled based on uh, as opposed to based on the origin, they're being scaled from the center point of the geometry, which is leaving us with the effect that I was actually looking for and was slightly confused when I didn't see. So um, I'm sorry about that. Oh, it's all good. So we've got the uh, single set um, for a single tower. Um, let's just check some of our settings and things mm -hmm. to make sure they're working. So number of braces is working nicely. Uh, the brace thickness is an overall control. Mm -hmm. It's working nicely. The spacing there. And their position in Y. Nice. So we can uh, duplicate this uh, for the length, and then eventually we'll duplicate that for the width as well. So for the length, um, well, I said I was going to rename this guy and it would update the expression. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to rename this to brace height copy. Whoa. And uh, if we come back up to where we're using stamping, we'll see that's actually updated cool. there. So, um, keep things a bit neater, especially if we're referencing them on other nodes, having copy two is a, a little untidy. So let's wire this into a new copy, which I will call, uh, let's call this tower or brace length. And we will jump up to our original length curves. And where we branch off of this scale, let's grab this guy and wire him into our template geometry input. And, of course, we need to use the group that's set up here so that we're only copying to the mm -hmm. center points where our towers are. And then we need a second copy that will copy for our width. So we'll call this brace width copy. 
and we've got our uh, curve coming in that we offset and grouped everyone but the first point, so we can actually use this curve to copy if we come in and use the template group as group non-zero. So now let's uh, merge this down in with our final merge that we've got so far, and then we can see everything working together, change tower numbers and things, and make sure everything's matching up nicely. So we can see that they're sitting in between the towers. They've been copied based on the length and the width. So let's come over to our master control and start changing some of these parameters. So we've got our um, raised position Y that we can offset these down mm -hmm. if we want to. If we were to start changing at height of the towers, these guys will move with them. If we were to start changing the overall height of everything, they'll move with them. If we were to come up and change the thickness, it changes the thickness of these guys instead. So that matches nicely. We've got the towers in length. If we start changing that, we get our braces matching perfectly there. And again, in width as well. So um, with that, that's actually everything concludes this video. So thank you very much. And thank you for bearing with me for the second there where we had a little slip up. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks very much. Perfect.